Good morning and welcome to Holy Comforter's Children's Worship on this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. This morning's story comes out of the book of Mark and it's called, Jesus Goes to the Synagogue. It was the Sabbath day. The Sabbath was the day when the people of Israel went to their synagogues to sing and pray. A synagogue is like a church. One Sabbath day, Jesus and his friends were in the town of Capernaum, so of course they went to the synagogue. All of the other Jewish people of Capernaum were in the synagogue too. They said prayers and sang songs just the way we do in our churches. They asked Jesus to talk to them. We like to hear Jesus speak to us in the synagogue, said the people of Capernaum. He doesn't get us all mixed up. We understand what he's saying. So Jesus told the people of Capernaum about how God loves every one of them. God loves the people who try, try to live God's way. God also loves the people who don't live God's way. And God wants us to love each other too. Suddenly, one of the men jumped up and started yelling, Who do you think you are, Jesus? You have come here to hurt us. You are God's Holy One, and you have come here to make trouble. The man was shaking all over. There were tears in his eyes. His face was very white, and he was breathing very hard. Jesus took the man's hand and talked gently to him. The words you were saying are not your words, because you are not feeling well, because you feel mixed up and afraid. The things you were saying are mixed up. So just sit quietly for a few moments and you will feel better. Jesus sat down beside the man and held his hand. After a while, the man stopped shaking. He stopped breathing so hard and his face wasn't so white. The people in the synagogue were so surprised. Jesus talks to us and we can understand him. And he can also make sick people feel well. Jesus is a wonderful teacher. After the synagogue service was over, all the people went home. They told their friends about Jesus. When Jesus talks, we can understand everything he says. He can also help people who are sick. So what did you hear in the story that stood out to you? Maybe something you've heard before, or maybe something you've never heard before. Why do you think Jesus helped heal the man who was sick? Do you ever feel far away from God? How do you think God can help you feel closer to him? I want you to think about those questions this week, and now it's time for us to do our creed. We believe in God the Father, the creator of all things. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for our sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives us our gifts to use for the body of Christ. Now it's time for us to do our prayers to people, and the response after each prayer is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the churches of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people who lead our country and state. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our church. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace on earth and for people who have nothing to eat or drink. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the brave, alert, and strong military that they show mercy in carrying out their service. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, friends, and everyone around the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for anyone who has died and their families who might be upset. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our church to do what God asks us to do by helping our community and neighbors. Lord, hear our prayer. Now it's time for us to do our five-finger prayer. Our five-finger prayer starts with our thumb closest to us. At our thumb, let's pray for those closest to you, your family. So let's take a minute and think about the people in your family that you would like to pray for, and let's pray for them now. Our second finger is our pointer finger, so let's pray for those that point you in the right direction, our teachers, doctors, and priests. Let's ask for wisdom and support. So let's take a minute and think about the people like our teachers, our doctors, and our priests, and let's ask God to give them wisdom and support. Our third finger is our middle finger. It's the tallest finger, so let's pray for those that lead us, the people in government. Let's ask God to give them guidance and wisdom. 
So let's take a minute and think about the people who lead our communities, people like the president, the governors, mayors, city managers, anyone who might help make decisions for our communities, and let's pray for them now. Our fourth finger is our ring finger. It's the weakest finger. Let's pray for those that are weak, in trouble, or in pain. We cannot pray too much for them. So let's take a minute and think about the people who need extra prayer this week. Those that are sick, those that are alone, those that are homeless, and let's ask God to be with them now. And our last finger is our pinky finger. It's the smallest finger, so let's pray for ourselves and our own needs. So I want you to take a minute and think about the things you need prayer for this week, and let's pray for them now. And let's end our time together with a prayer. Holy God, we thank you so much for our time together. We thank you for the stories in the Bible that you give us so that we can know you better. We ask that you be with us this week. Help us to shine our Christ light brightly to the people around us. Help us to be kind and generous, even when people are not kind and generous to us. We just thank you so much for all of our blessings, especially for our church family. We thank you for opportunities to meet together, even though we are apart. We just ask that you bring us back safely next week so that we can hear more about your stories. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this morning's lesson, and I will see you again next week. Bye.